California, it's basically known as the epicenter for the American dream. The glitz and glam of Hollywood, the glorious sunshine, but there is a darker side to the Golden State. So today, we're looking at some of the creepiest abandoned places in California. We're starting off our trip to the Golden State with the Gates of Hell in Hacienda Heights. What is known as the Gates of Hell is this big barbed wire fence surrounding a piece of property that is rumored to have been a sanatorium back in the 40s. The story goes that this hospital had been shut down due to malpractice. And there are other stories that the building beyond this fence was the home of Satan worshippers who practiced all kinds of dark rituals on the property. As to how this rumor got started, well beyond this ominous barbed wire fence is the back entrance to a building. Those few who have managed to sneak a glimpse of it have apparently seen all sorts of pentagrams and cultish symbols drawn all over it. And peeking inside the windows, you can supposedly see red stains covering the inside. Now, these could just be nothing more than made up stories, but many people claim to have this uneasy feeling that washes over them when they pass by this gate. There has to be some reason for that barbed wire keeping people out, or maybe it's there to keep something in. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. By the way, we have awesome content coming your way on the daily. All right, the notorious Bohemian Grove. Bohemian Grove is a private campground located in Monte Rio, California. It's known for hosting an annual invite-only retreat for members of the Bohemian Club, a private men's club that only allows highfalutin men from fields in politics, business, and the arts. Now, the area isn't always closed off to the public, just when this annual gathering takes place. And what goes on in these gatherings at Bohemian Grove is incredibly secretive. And there are very strict rules in place for members about maintaining this secrecy. The most famous event at Bohemian Grove is said to be the cremation of care ceremony, which is a symbolic ritual performed in front of a large owl-shaped statue. Nobody, other than the members, of course, know what this ritual entails. But you have a bunch of powerful people meeting in the middle of the woods in secret performing ceremonies. No surprise why most people on the outside find this incredibly suspect. I don't know. Let your mind go wild. Do they sacrifice a poor person every year and then drink their blood while dancing in the nude around the big owl statue? That's what I picture. I picture Wicker Man type stuff going on. Like, what needs to be so secret about a camping trip? I've never been roasting marshmallows and catching fish in the woods with my buddies and turned to them and been like, guys, this stays in the woods here. None of this gets out. All right, the hidden city under Mount Shasta. Now, unlike everything else you'll see on this list, this place is only rumored to exist. But the story behind it is pretty fascinating. According to the legend, there's said to be this hidden underground city or a network of tunnels beneath the majestic Mount Shasta in Northern California. There are a few different versions of this legend, but the gist is that there's this hidden city inhabited by an advanced and enlightened civilization. Some say they're remnants, some an ancient civilization, extraterrestrial beings, or even spiritually advanced beings known as Lumerians. Lumeria is a mythical lost continent in the Pacific, kinda in the same vein as Atlantis, and according to the legend, Lumerians found refuge in the tunnels beneath the mountain after their continent sank into the ocean. There have also been a good number of UFO sightings around Mount Shasta, and people who have claimed to actually encounter the underground city, like the prospector J.C. Brown, who claimed to discover the city back in 1904. He said he'd found a cave that sloped down 11 miles while prospecting for gold. And inside the cave, he found an entire city filled with gold and artifacts like shields and weapons, even the remains of large mummified humanoids, some of which were 10 feet tall. Brown didn't come out with his story until years later, telling a man named John C. Root about his tale. John gathered a search team, but on the day the group was supposed to meet, J.C. Brown apparently didn't show up. Not only that though, he was never seen or heard from again. So I don't know, did he actually show up? And they went down there, they found the stuff, and then they were like, we want the gold to ourselves and like took him out maybe? Who knows? Next on the list is Ano Nuevo Island. This place hasn't always been an island. It used to be connected to the mainland through a narrow strip of land that acted as a bridge, but water levels rose, eventually cutting it off. All that sits on this piece of land now are a handful of abandoned buildings and the residence, which used to be the home of a lighthouse keeper. The lighthouse is gone now, but the keeper is said to still linger in the afterlife anyway. The island is completely abandoned and off limits, now a protected wildlife preserve, home to seals and sea lions. But some say 
but on certain nights, they've seen the windows of the old lighthouse keeper's home light up as if someone or something still looms over the island, keeping watch. In the LA suburb of Downey sits a fenced off, boarded up set of homes and buildings known as the Old LA County Poor Farm. The history of this place dates back to 1887, when the LA County Board of Supervisors decided to create a facility for the homeless. They bought 124 acres of farmland near Downey, functioned as a place for them to stay, but also to work. It was a working farm with buildings to house residents, offices, and even common areas. Over the years, the farm expanded to around 400 acres by 1910 and produced a variety of crops and livestock. It was a self-sustaining operation, providing food for residents and selling all the excess produce for profit. Like, what an awesome idea. We need stuff like this today. Things eventually changed, of course, though. In 1915, a new superintendent took charge. The Great Depression also brought its challenges with funding drying up and a tent city being constructed. During World War II, part of the place became an army base, and after the war, the facility evolved into a hospital, abandoning the farm aspect by the 50s. And then by the 80s, the aging hospital moved to a new facility across the street, leaving the old poor farm abandoned. It's now completely off limits to the public, surrounded by no trespassing signs and barbed wire fences. Creepy story though, in 2006, the military came to the area for a training exercise and Marines stumbled upon a freezer containing tons of mummified body parts, likely from the hospital, but that's still really creepy. The Point Sur Lighthouse is surrounded by ghostly tales. It was constructed in 1889, helping to navigate vessels along the Big Sur coastline. One tale about this place is that the original lighthouse keeper continues to watch over the tower till this day. Future keepers have had the creepy experience of being all alone in the tower at night, only to hear labored footsteps ascending the stairs and the sounds of huffs and puffs coming from the stairs. But when they've called out to ask who's there or to go and look, the stairway is completely empty. There are also stories about a woman in a vintage dress wandering near the lighthouse, and some say she's the spirit of one who died in a shipwreck. Next on the list is the Lincoln Heights Jail. This was a pretty notorious jail. Big names like Al Capone used to be housed here. The jail has been around since 1931. It was originally constructed to hold about 625 prisoners, but by the 50s it was packing in about 2,800 folks. You can only imagine what the conditions were like in that place. And in the 50s and 60s, when LA was cracking down on LGBT activity, the place became known for something else. Cops were going after queer individuals, making arrests, and the prison had its own separate wing just for these prisoners. In 1965, the city decided to shut the facility down. It sat empty for ages with people tossing around ideas for renovations, a trade school, a rooftop garden. In 1979, the Bilingual Foundation for the Arts moved in, but by 2014, it was abandoned yet again. Fast forward to 2017, the city wanted ideas to revive the place. The Lincoln Property Company and 15 Group got the nod to turn it into a Lincoln Heights Maker's District. Public market, amphitheater, all that kind of jazz, but the place ended up being really tough to renovate. It was full of hazardous material, decay, and getting the place up to current environmental standards was tough. So the project was ultimately abandoned and the place still sits empty to this day. Next up, we have the Sunken City. This spot is is completely off limits to the public, although you probably wouldn't think it with how many people fart around in the place. The sunken city is located in San Pedro and got its name in 1929 when a landslide caused a part of the coastline to plunge into the ocean. This left behind this series of concrete foundations, streets, and sidewalks that now sit below the cliffs. The area became popular for how eerie and surreal the landscape is. Even though it's been technically closed off to the public since 87, because of safety concerns, people were climbing the unstable cliffs and it became a liability. They're not supposed to go wandering around there and the city has to put up fences and signs to make sure everyone gets the message. Trespassing can result in fines or even arrests, but people continue to sneak in. When I say people, I mean like young people. Let's be real. It looks beautiful though. There's palm trees, really cool looking graffiti. I get why people would want to check it out, but apparently it can be pretty dangerous. Forget the fines. People often get mugged here or worse. Let's talk about Murphy Ranch, sitting in the hills near Los Angeles. So back in the 30s, a couple with some pretty unconventional ideas decided to build a self-sufficient compound there. And by unconventional ideas, 
I mean, they were incredibly anti-Semitic. They thought the world was headed for some major chaos, and seeing as World War II was looming, kind of was, so they built this compound, which ended up becoming something of a base for American Third Reich sympathizers during the Second World War. The compound had living quarters, a power station, and even a water storage system. It was a haven for them, and uh, other like-minded pricks. But the US government got wind of it and shut it down in 1941, the day after the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor. The remains of Murphy Ranch now sit completely abandoned and completely off limits. Old dilapidated buildings and graffiti covered walls are all that remain. Yes, graffiti, people still do sneak in. Next on the list we have Alcatraz. This is one of the most notorious former prisons in the entire world. The amount of stories about this place is damn near endless, and it's said that some of the former prisoners still linger within the building till this day. Back in the 1850s, it started as a military setup, housing soldiers, but then in 1934, it switched gears and became a high security prison, holding big name crooks like Al Capone and George Machine Gun Kelly. Life on Alcatraz was no joke for inmates. They faced solitary confinement, hard labor, and punishment was incredibly tough. On top of that, the place was said to be this impossible area to escape, being out in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by ice-cold water. Oddly enough, though, there were actually multiple escape attempts here, a whopping 14 to be exact. The most famous attempt was in 1962 when Frank Morris and the Anglin brothers disappeared into thin air. Some say they actually made it to shore, started new lives in secret, but others think they drowned in the frigid water. Others who tried weren't as lucky guards shot some or just caught him before they even got that far. With all that said, I've been your host James, and I will catch you, yes you specifically, in the next video.